So as you know, we began the Walk the Talk project this summer and we continued for nine weeks in July and August. But just towards the end of that, another black life was taken. This gentleman's name was Trayford Pellerin. He lived in Lafayette, Louisiana. And you may not have heard of him because he's not the only one. There have been others since we concluded the first round of our Walk the Talk program. So this compels us to continue. Let our And I want to thank everyone who's worked so hard over those two months, especially Denise banks -Grisadic. Um She worked as our curator and coach for the program and all the talk elements. I was content to sort of stay behind the scenes, directing the walk itself from the church, the American church, past the American embassy to the Brandenburg Gate. But I find myself in a position now being called to do a little bit more. And so as the volunteer organizer, I'm gonna be helping to curate and coach the talks with a lot of other speakers as well. But today I want to inform you about our case study. We're gonna take what we learned from Denise and apply it to the case of Trayford Pellerin. But I also wanna thank everyone else, our spiritual warrior director, Pastor Mari, and Deacon Kumar, Rick Carpenter, Emma, and Eben, and Claudia, and Laura, and Jürgen, and the Berlin Polizei who have been escorting us on the walks. We had a great nine weeks, but we begin our fall sequence now. Let's remind ourselves what Denise taught us about racism and systems of race. Systems of race are designed to dehumanize, demoralize, disempower, and disenfranchise. Today we're gonna to learn about the case of Trayford Pellerin because a lot of this is going on. So, Breonna Taylor was killed back in March, and this past Wednesday, the grand jury results were out. They decided to do pretty much nothing about the police officers. They found one of them guilty of randomly shooting non-lethal but potentially lethal bullets into the white neighbor's house, recklessly endangering the white neighbors, while doing nothing about Brianna's death or for the non-lethal but potentially lethal bullets which went into the black neighbor's house on the other side. We had just about concluded Walk the Talk here in Berlin when on the 21st of August, Trayford Pellerin was shot and killed by six police officers. Let's talk about video footage of these murders and killings that we've been seeing. George Floyd sparked something huge, a global awakening, if you will. You all know about it, so I'm, I don't need to dwell on that. But the video fo footage of the horrible crimes, the video footage of Daniel Prude in Rochester, which came out this month in September, but happened and was filmed from those body cameras quite a bit further back, I think in the spring. I once worked at Google, and while I was working there and we were working with YouTube, YouTube inspired the Arab Spring in Egypt. And we really thought that the potential of video plus democracy, thank you, was just gonna change the world. And it didn't turn out so well for the Arab Spring. And it's interesting, but the video has power, but it's not always appropriate. George Floyd's daughter said it best at Joe Biden at her dad's funeral. My daddy is changing the world. When I thought about today's presentation, I originally wanted to show you the video that captures Trayford Pellerin's death. But it turns out there's a lot of reasons why I should not do that. If you think it's valuable to you to see it, I encourage you to find it on the internet. There's a few versions, some more or less censored than others. Time limits me now, so look it up on your own. But it happened at a gas station, and it was witnessed and filmed by a very brave young woman who knew that George Floyd's videos and all the other videos had accomplished something to waken up the world. So without really thinking about it, she didn't have time, she hit the record button on her phone. Her name was Rikasha Montgomery. And she narrated the whole thing in her own words. 
Her narration is astonishing. She predicts what's going to happen about three times just before it happens. And it's terrifying. And it says something about what her expectations are as a black woman in America. I've added Trayford Pellerin to our memorials. And I've updated Breonna Taylor. A few days after he was murdered, there was Hurricane Laura and the Storm Marco, and it hit Western uh, Louisiana and Houston five or six days after his death. The, the preparation for that storm and the passing of the storm probably helped bury the story. I forgot, I wanted to read you just the first two sentences of this. Trayford Pellerin, a black American man, was pursued on foot and surrounded by six Lafayette, Louisiana police officers who then shot him at point blank range 11 times. We have Kenosha, Wisconsin, much more widely known about. Jacob Blake, who thank God survived, but who is paralyzed, was shot in the back seven times by the police there. Is it the population? There's some numbers here. Maybe. The urban area population of Lafayette, Louisiana, however, is almost three times the size of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Lafayette is 32% black. Kenosha's only 11. What's going on? I don't have the answers here, by the way. I'm just asking you the questions. Mr. Pellerin was shot at a gas station on a busy highway that separates two very distinct neighborhoods. One's mostly white, one's mostly black. The income, average income on other sides of the street are quite different. Listen to some quotes from some of the black citizens of the neighborhood. Tameka Theremin, 37. You can't keep up with the stories because they're happening too fast. Sylvia Richard, a retired school teacher. I know we're a small town compared to most, but I don't think we're receiving enough attention. What happens here mirrors what happened in Wisconsin but nobody's really paying attention to it. The family's lawyer, Ronald Haley, describing Trayford Pellerin's family, said that they feel that their pain's been overshadowed by these other events. And they noted that the football team of Louisiana, the New Orleans Saints, taped the name of Jacob Blake to their helmets at a game shortly after Trayford Pellerin's death. Mr. Haley said, that's great, but man, we have somebody dead from only two hours away from New Orleans. So what's going on? Systems of race are designed to dehumanize, demoralize, disempower, and disenfranchise. I'd like you to meet the mayor president of Lafayette, Louisiana. He won by a majority and was installed in November. The opponent was from an unaffiliated party. There was no Democratic candidate who even ran for this mayorship. I don't really know all the details, just sharing a few basics. Meet some local protest leaders. These people inspire me, and I want you to know about them. Jamal Taylor, very well educated. These group of people generally have chosen to work with the NAACP, a very historic organization. So they're also somewhat involved with Black Lives Matter, but they're working closely with the NAACP. Devon Trey Norman, Pamela Thibodeau, and Tara Laxey. So if you didn't pick up the details, here's the facts. The mayor visited the site of the incident the night it happened. So did Trayford's family. It was actually a coincidence. They happened to be driving by and came upon the death of their beloved uncle, son, brother. The mayor took 24 hours to release a statement in which he said the community's thoughts and prayers were with the police officers, period. He never mentioned the family of the victim. I'd like to introduce you to another protester, one I actually admire quite a lot, Tara Laxey.
systems of race. There are systems in the South of the United States which might have been suppressing the news. There's certainly a mayor who wants you to be thinking about the well-being of the policemen and not of the victims and who's screaming how unjust it is to have someone barbecue in his front yard. Could we from Berlin do anything to help these people, to help the activists, to help the community, to create or inspire systems that humanize the victim, humanize the community, inspire the community, empower the community, engage the community. I'm gonna share with you two that are really easy to do, that you could do from here with a great deal of ease. First of all, I like that this, these community activists are working with the NAACP. It's a really fantastic historical organization. They have a great new campaign with this hashtag, we are done dying. It refers not just to these murders, but to the COVID deaths that are so severely disproportionate. I encourage you to go to NAACP.org. They have another website and another campaign you can get through from the first website. Black voices change lives. This is fantastic. And I'm gonna strongly encourage all of us to do it. By signing up here, you can help boost black voter turnout. So that election in which this mayor, Joss Guillory, was elected had like less than 55% turnout in the area. It's the belief of the NAACP that by having volunteers call black voters in this area, um, and this could be done with less expensive options than a direct call, Skype options, et cetera. And they very strongly encourage people of all races to be a volunteer, to help call potential voters in the area. That could be a fantastic experience. And guess what? Even though you're all the way over here, after these so many minutes, you know what happened there. And you can talk to one of those residents about what they think about what happened there and make a difference because there are elections coming up that matter. And your communication with someone there, electronic pen pal, if you will, could really make a difference. Thank you. Full of the faith that the darkness has taught us.